Good evening, everyone. My name is Maria Teresa Dizon. I am currently a senior at Marianas High School. And last summer, I had the privilege of being a part of the Step Up program. And over the summer, my project was about box jellyfish, specifically the Copula civicisi, which is the our Pacific sea wasp, which is home to our waters. It is the relative of the Australian box jellyfish. So I had the privilege of working with my two very awesome mentors, Mr. Roy Adsit in the back over there. He's from Saipan Southern High School. And I also had a privilege of working with Daniel, Dr. Angel Yanagihara. She is a box venom expert for jellyfish. She's been working with jellyfish for a really long time. And she's really renowned. She's from the University of Hawaii. And she was a really huge help for my project. And she, will, she and my mentor inspired me to work with jellyfish. Uh, just kind of off the project thing, I would really encourage for those of you high school students who are interested in science or who are not even really interested. From my personal point of view, I never really liked science, but uh, this program, this step up program, it really gave me a whole new different perspective on science. So after the summer, I, I just grew to love it. It was difficult at first because working with jellyfish, especially venomous jellyfish, is really scary. But with the help of my mentors, I and my partner Leanne, we are partners for the project. Uh, I work with the chemical kind of aspect while she worked with the physical barriers. So our projects are very similar. And hopefully you enjoy my presentation. I'm very nervous just putting it out there. <laughs> So for my hypothesis, I had two hypotheses that um, one, we hypothesized that chemical substances with high saline content will greatly inhibit the copula civicis stinging cell discharge. My second one was we also hypothesized that chemical substances with lower saline content will induce the copula civicis stinging. So while uh, those that are higher saline content with high salt levels will have a greater chance of discharging the stinging cell. Those with the lower saline content will induce it, will trigger the firing. So the goal of my experiment was to examine the various chemicals of a baking soda mixed with seawater, vinegar, and distilled water on the copula civicis stinging cell discharge. I chose these four elements, these chemicals, because upon doing my research and reading other papers from different scientists and reports from the newspaper, I saw that these were very common treatments for those who were stung. And the one that stood out to me was in Australia, where the Australian box jellyfish is home to. They would have these posts made of wood, and they would have these little jars of uh, vinegar that would be just ready for anyone who got stung, which was pretty normal. And they would have jugs and jugs of it. And I just wondered to myself, why vinegar? But uh, I want to ask the crowd, how many of you, uh, when you got stung, or the common treatment would be to pee on it? A lot of you think pee. Pee is not the way. It is not the way. Uh, from my men one of my mentors, Dr. Angel Yanagihara, she found that Peeing on a sting does not help. It actually makes it worse, causing it to fire. So just a future tip for all of you, do not pee on your jellyfish sting. So the box jellyfish in the scene of mine. So the box jellyfish is also found near Manigaha Island and the Smiley Cove Marina docks in Yarapan. We've heard a lot of news about tourists getting stung. By these box jellyfish near Manigaha Island, they are way bigger there. And they also come from season to season. And from what I've learned through my project is they have these special times that they would come out. And it's called astronomical twilight from 
So there are certain hours at night that they would come out. They, those, these jellyfish actually have adhesive pads on their bodies that allow them to stick to the ocean floor for, for how long? Like during the day and then at night they would just float up, upward to get food. So the Smiley Cove Marina docks is where we mainly caught our jellyfish. So we would like go there at night and just fight the mosquitoes and whatever weather it was, we would take our materials and try to catch them there. It would take uh, about two hours and sometimes we get really lucky and sometimes we wouldn't. So we would uh, just lay down there near the docks and then like put our faces really close to the water with these high power voltage kind of lights and sometimes we'd float them in the water and that's what we'd use. So the importance of the box jellyfish in the cinema. There is a rising number of jellyfish sting incidents that happen every year. From the Pacific Marine Research Institute, this is a graph about uh, reported jellyfish stings by year to the hospital. So each year it gets greater and greater. Fortunately, we do not have any information for year 2013. So most of the people that are stung are tourists because they love our beaches and they love to swim. And tourism is also the lifeline of the Sinemai's economy. So further research for potential jellyfish sting medicine is very important not only to us but other countries or places like Australia and New Zealand and Indonesia for those who get affected. Because there's actually something called the Irukandji syndrome which is very, very fatal which causes the cardiovascular parts of the human and immune system to just uh, deteriorate and just dismantle itself. So this is a Copula Sibikisi. It's uh, way smaller than you think. It's only about 14 milliliters, so it's very small. And it's not as venomous as its cousin, the Pacific uh, box jellyfish and the Australian box jellyfish. So it's known as the sea wasp because it can just drift along the water. And jellyfish, they just kind of go with the flow. But it, for the box jellyfish, they have very advanced eyesight, which makes them uh, kind of a tough predator because they can go after their prey. They're active only at night, so they stay at the bottom of the ocean with their adhesive pads to the sand for during the day. And they, although they have d delicate bodies, they are very armed with uh, the matices, and we'll get to that later. So this is this is the matices. There are tiny capsules that are found specially in cnidarians, like jellyfish, uh, sea anemone, and corals. These are the capsules and what they use to arm themselves should there be anything that is bothering them or foreign to them that are touching them. So jellyfish are not the enemy when it comes to swimming or anything. They just happen to be really threatened when we go near them. So this is their defense mechanism. So uh, all, all over the bodies, mostly all over the tentacles, there is up to 5,000 per tentacle. So they have a lot all over their bodies, including the bell, which is where their heads are. And what these nematocysts act like are like mini harpoons that go through the skin. And it actually only takes what, microseconds, less than a second to get into the bloodstream. And that's why it's such a huge problem for doctors or even experts to find the nematocyst in the blood or any kind of venom because it's really hard to get, even no matter how fast they bring them to the hospital. It's very difficult to see how it goes in and how do we take it out. So it's dermonchrotic, which, is, which means that it ruins the tissues the tissue cells and it kills it. So part one, this is us at night. We would go to the Garapan docks. We also went to Ladder Beach to find these little jellyfish. We would use uh, these long 
sticks. Um, we would take cups and then we would just tie them with tape. We didn't use any nets or anything that would hurt these jellyfish because they're very fragile and very small. So using a cup made it really difficult because they swim really quickly. But fortunately, through that method, we were able to get a lot. Uh, we also got from Smiling Cove Marina, which they're very close to the, the, upper, the upper part of the ocean. So that's where we got it really quickly. For Ladder Beach, unfortunately, we were not too lucky because uh, it was really rough. And I actually got stung when we were getting jellyfish at Ladder Beach. Uh, I'm happy that it's already gone, the scar. So That's my partner, Leanne. There's Mr. Fury and uh, the other Step Up students. And sometimes even relatives would come out and help us. So this is an up-close photo of what we used. We just used uh, regular cups and then we would cover them with black uh, heavy-duty tape. And then we use these long wooden poles so we could really get down into the water and then just pull them up. Uh, we also use a hydrometer because we store them in this aquarium to make sure that uh, the salinity content would be fine for these jellyfish to stay alive. And then we also use this car battery operated kind of thing with uh, these really high beam lights with a styrofoam around it. And that's what we use to float in the water. So these jellyfish are very attracted by really, really strong light. Somehow they also really like the moon. So these lights kind of mimic that light and they, that's how they come out. So for our experiment, we made milk powder agar plates so these are directions of how to make it. We would take agar, which is the powder and water, and then milk. And then we would kind of, in a sense, cook it with using these materials from our Step Up Lab. And it took a lot of trial and error because certain measurements were too much or too little. So it took like 10 tries to get one batch. So. I think that's what science is really about, trial and error. And unfortunately, you have to be super patient with science. And that's what uh, this Step Up program taught me, is being patient with this whole science process and also seeing, like, after 10 tries, here we got it, what's the next step? So we use Petri dishes, and then we would put the uh, cooked agar inside and then we would put it in the refrigerator to harden. We didn't want it too hard up to a point where it felt like ice, but we wanted like a jelly-like form to kind of mimic skin as if uh, those jellyfish were on skin. So me and Leanne would, would put these jellyfish tentacles on the, on the skin, the agar mixture, and then we would wait for only five to 10 minutes. So part three for my chemicals that I tested, I tested distilled water, vinegar, seawater, baking soda, mixed with seawater. Uh, majority of these chemicals are with seawater because these nematocysts in the jellyfish usually react to uh, foreign chemicals things that are not in the sea, so obviously vinegar is not from the sea, uh, urine is not really in the sea, uh, also baking soda. So what I used is a manual refractometer, so we looked for the salinity, just looking out in the sun and just taking the reading from the manual ref refractometer. So the saline content of each uh, from highest to lowest would be baking soda, vinegar, seawater, and then distilled water. So the experiment, as you can see here, that the jellyfish are very small. 
as opposed to the photo that I showed earlier. Uh, our first experiment originally had only the tentacles, which we had to cut off, but it was really difficult because they were really small and we had to do everything really quickly because they were going to die very soon. So we decided to just use the whole jellyfish for each each kind of chemical and then we would we would put the chemical substances directly on them and then we would remove the jellyfish from the tank after after it all and then we would put the chemical on it afterwards we would observe through a compound light microscope so with the time, we only had like five to 10 minutes and for them to react, we really had to do it very quickly. Get the jellyfish out, put it on the agar, put the chemical and then observe. Unfortunately, we didn't have the most like up-to-date technology with the uh, forms of microscope, but we worked with what we had and we used, we used that to view mm -hmm. any reactants if there was any. So what we did was we would observe it through a compound light microscope and then we would see if they were still alive with these chemicals and then to see if they reacted with the surrounding agar. So the results. Uh, since we don't have the very high tech microscopes, we relied on lysis. So over here, we had the vinegar stain cells discharge. So in the upper part, there are these stinging cells that are grouped together. And then when they are triggered, they all come out like an explosion. And as you can see here, there are little parts that are separated from the group part over here. So when we did it with the vinegar, it reacted. Also with the baking soda, same thing, the staining cells also discharged. So with distilled water, staining cells also discharged, but with plain sea water, there was no discharge. So conclusion, the sea water did not, did inhibit the Copula cervicesis stinging cell discharge. All chemicals except the seawater, despite their saline content, triggered the stinging cell discharge. So what I figured was that since all of these chemicals are foreign to the jellyfish tentacle, they would trigger that because they they are not part of the sea. There's something that was new to the jellyfish and it chose to react by arming itself and releasing it's harpoons, the nematocysts. So my hypothesis uh, was rejected and because three out of four chemicals were discharged despite their saline content. I want to thank uh, Step Up, the Northern Marianas College and NMC Crees, uh, Mr. John Fury, my Step Up family, Leanne, Noemi, Miss Annette, um, Justin, it's not here, Noemi, uh, Miss Annette, Miss Jackie Kudabwa, my mentors, and Sina Mike.